Thank you for joining us today. It is Transfiguration Sunday, which is a, a big moment in the gospel message or in the story of Jesus. We'll be talking more about that at church and here in just a minute, so I'll save all that talk for now. Uh, hope you can make it to church today. We have services at 8.30 and 11 and Sunday school at 9.45. Uh, Lenten retreat coming up next weekend, March 5th and 6th. Hope you're ready if you haven't got signed up please do so. Uh, you, there's a link in the details below. Otherwise, let's get started with prayer. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Please join me in Psalm 99. The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim, let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The King is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob, you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the, the decrees he gave them. Lord our God, you answered them. You were to Israel a forgiving God, though you punished their misdeeds. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Since then, we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of God as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, as I mentioned, this is Transfiguration Sunday. Uh, if you're not sure what the Transfiguration is, um, there's a story in the gospel where Jesus takes just a few of his disciples, not all of them, just, just a few of them uh, with him, and they go off to pray. And while they're there, right before their very eyes, Jesus is transfigured or transformed into his glorified self or the version that he was becoming, or the version that he would reveal to be after the resurrection. They were getting a glimpse of that. So as Jesus is still in the process of being transformed or transfigured into his glorified self through the death, death burial, and resurrection, they got a glimpse of that here with him. And that's what this Sunday is all about. You'll hear more about this in the service uh, this morning. But so for, the, for today's devotional, I just wanted to focus on what Paul said about the transfiguration here in this second letter to the, to the Corinthians. Paul says that before Christ, before we know Christ, we have a veil over our eyes, which means that we, we see the world through a filter, through the way we understand it. Uh, and, and, and the way Paul's talking about here, you know, the Jews understood it through 
the, the law and the prophets and their understanding. And we, too, you know, have our filters uh, just from our culture, just what we think we know about God and about life and reality. So before Christ, we have a veil over our eyes and, and we see everything through that filter. But through the spiritual life with Christ, we, too, are being transfigured or, or transformed into our true selves who we're becoming. And so God removes the veil from our eyes or that filter from our minds as we get to know Christ and it strips off all of these things that don't really belong in there, don't really belong as part of our story to get down to who we truly are in God. God shows us truth, removes these filters, and it lets us live in freedom and and just in the truth so that we can love others purely and, and really. So God sets us free so that we can truly live. As Jesus said, we have this abundant life waiting for us. That's such good news. That's such good news, especially in a world that often doesn't see anything good out there, or anything positive out there. Um, there is good news that, that in Christ and through this stepping into a, a life with Christ, God can remove all of those things that, that doesn't really belong anyway so that we can see who we really are as children of God and really understand how much we're loved by God and how much we're able to love as well. Christ is calling all of us to step into this life of love so that we can experience all that life truly has to offer. We just need to be willing and open to answer that call that's available to everybody. Amen. God of Moses and Elijah, through your chosen Son, Jesus Christ, you fulfilled the ancient promises. Now quiet our minds with the presence of your Holy Spirit that we may discover his hope in the scriptures. Amen. Again, I hope you have an awesome Sunday. If you're able to make it, we have Sunday school at 945, services at 830 and 11. Hope to see at least one of those. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you tomorrow.